Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today for our event, Diving Deep into Cost Optimization for Google Compute Engine. My name is Lauren, and I'm the content manager for the Google Cloud community. Joining us today is Dao Wei, who will be taking us through the content and answering your questions today. Questions are encouraged, so please feel free to add those into the YouTube chat box, and we'll be sure to get to them either in the chat or at the end of the presentation. We do have a few pre-submitted questions that we'll cover first as well. And for any questions that we don't get to live, we'll be including them in a recap post in the Google Cloud community. And there's a link to that in the YouTube description. So stay tuned. And we'd love to hear where you're joining us from. So if you can drop that into the chat too, we'd love to see where you're joining us from and what questions you may have. All right, with that, I'll hand it over to you, Dawe, to take us through the content today. Thank you so much, Lauren. Uh, my name is Dawe. I'm the technical account manager from Google Singapore. So today's topic is cost optimization, deep dive for a compute engine. Um, so um, this for, for this session, we'll cover a little bit more uh, uh, cost optimization on compute engine, and uh, it will actually explore the different ways and techniques that you can use uh, to uh, save cost on compute engine. Note that uh, this is uh, not just about uh, compute engine as in compute engine, but also about uh, compute instances that using other services like GKE or Dataproc. So this is the agenda today. Uh, we'll talk about why we need to have this session, why compute engine cost optimization, and uh, we will also talk about the plan and architecture for cost efficiency. We will also talk about the CUDs and SUDs, uh, which is basically optimizing your discounts. We also talk about uh, important cost reporting tools and techniques. Uh, last but not least, we also have uh, uh, we will also cover Google Time Services and Premium Support. We also have a live Q and A session, as Lauren has mentioned. Uh, we already received uh, five or six questions, so I will cover these questions first. But uh, whenever you have uh, any new questions during this session, feel free to leave a message in the live chat. Uh, I will cover it uh, in a later live and Q&A session. So just a brief introduction about myself. My name is Da Wei. Uh, I'm located in Singapore. Uh, I've joined Google for about two and a half years. Uh, I'm currently a technical account manager, but I also have network engineer, security engineer, and cloud engineer experience. I supported some of the biggest Google Cloud customers in Southeast Asia, uh, delivered multiple cost optimization workshops and reports that helped customers achieve uh, more than a million of cost savings per year. So the first topic is uh, why compute engine cost optimization? Why all customers should consider compute engine cost optimization? First of all, um, compute engine is still one of the top service that the customer use on Google Cloud and on other cloud providers. Um, so because uh, many customers use a lot of compute engine resources, any cost optimization methods applied will have a big cost impact. Also, uh, because compute engine is actually a very mature product, it has many ways to optimize the cost. Uh, and it is usually quite easy to uh, optimize. Many compute engine cost optimization techniques are easy to implement without the need to change the code or architecture. Um, so this is a very important uh, compute cost optimization metrics. We will uh, revisit these metrics uh, again and again in this uh, session. Uh, but uh, just take a look at uh, the metrics and see uh, the x axis is basically how much savings you can uh, you can achieve with a particular cost optimization technique. And the y axis is the effort you need to uh, to achieve the cost of savings. Uh, what we actually want to prioritize is those on the we call it the false uh, false domain here. Um, so because it uh, takes a low effort, but it has potential for high savings. So let's talk about plan and architecture for cost efficiency. Uh, in this section, we will talk about uh, the possibility of re-architecturing and re-platforming the service. So this is actually a very simple point. 
uh, before you optimize on compute engine, you need to understand whether uh, your service should really run on compute engine because Google Cloud provides many different types of services uh, in different layers and uh, levels of abstraction. Uh, so probably maybe compute engine isn't really the best service out there depending on what you want to achieve. So uh, from the top to bottom is uh, actually uh, de in decreasing, decreasing level of uh, so-called abstraction. Uh, the top level is um, more managed service and uh, the bottom level is IS. So let's say we can have uh, cloud functions and app engine, which are actually good services for event driving, driving functions and web applications. If you also want to manage your containers, you can use Cloud Run and Kubernetes engine. So this is just uh, something that you want you need to consider before uh, you uh, move more move on to optimize your on your compute engine because maybe compute engine isn't really the best service uh, for you uh, depending on the workload. So uh, the next thing is that you need to plan ahead before the deployment on compute engine which machine family you want to use, which machine type you want to use. Are you using a predefined machine type? Are you using a custom machine type? Uh, are you going to use managed instance group or unmanaged instance group? And if you're using managed instance group, are you going to enable or disable auto scaling? Because auto scaling is actually uh, a major point for you to achieve uh, effective resource utilization. And uh, to understand the answers to these questions, it is important that uh, you also integrate uh, proof of concept uh, testing uh, before you actually deploy on your production environment. Because sometimes uh, you need some testing, uh, some uh, statistics to understand what is best for your workload. Um, regarding choosing the right VM family, Google Cloud actually provides uh, different uh, VM families for a different workload. So if, uh, let's say for example, uh, for general purpose uh, VMs, if your priority is cost of savings, you can use E2. Uh, if you want to have a scale out workload, then probably you can use Tau T2D. If you have a balanced workload, which is uh, you want to balance between customization performance and total cost of uh, ownership, then N2 or N2D is the solution. And the previous generation is N1, which is also considered as a balanced VM family. We also have on the right-hand side, the workload optimized VM families, uh, like the compute optimized VM with uh, high performance CPUs, which is uh, C2 and C2D. We also have a memory optimized uh, VMs and uh, they have the most memory on compute engine. We also have the accelerator optimized uh, VM, which is A2. It uh, is actually needed to work with high performance GPUs. And you can see from the bottom that uh, these different VM families are expected to work with different types of workload. Uh, before you start deploying on your production environment, do your research and uh, make a decision on the VM family. You can also design a POC environment, run the actual workload on the POC environment and see whether the VM family is actually the right, uh, right thing for you. You can, Google Cloud actually provides custom machine types uh, on top of uh, the predefined machine types. The good thing about custom machine types is that you can actually specify or customize uh, the CPU cores to memory ratio. Uh, the reason that uh, you want to do that is that uh, depending on the nature of your workload, you may have, uh, you may have actually a specific ratio of CPU versus memory that is best for your workload. Um, if you can have the workload uh, on the custom machine type that uh, maximize your resource usage efficiency. It also means that uh, you will achieve higher savings because uh, if your resource are used effectively, that means that you probably will need uh, fewer instances. 
So next, I will briefly talk about using spot VMs for preemptable workload. So spot VMs uh, enable customers to make the most of Google's idle capacity where and when it is available. Uh, on the top right corner, you can see a brief overview of spot VMs. Um, the highlight is that uh, if your workload uh, can use a spot VM, uh, which basically means that uh, you, uh, you have a flexible and stateless workloads that can handle preemption, then using spot VM can give you 60% to 91% discount against the undi amount VM. This is actually a huge discount. Uh, the pricing model is very simple and predictable. Uh, there's no max duration about uh, how long you can hold the spot VMs. But just take note that uh, the nature of spot VM is that uh, uh, Google can preempt, which means uh, taking back uh, the spot VM uh, whenever the resource is, uh, is going to be used by other customers. Uh, so what happens is that uh, if uh, the resource is going to be claimed back by Google, um, it will send a message to you 30 seconds before the actual preemption, and uh, you will lose access of the spot VM after 30 seconds. But the good thing is that if your workload can withstand this kind of uh, preemption, then this actually will save you a huge amount of money. On top, on the bottom right corner is actually a screenshot of the Google Cloud Console where you can choose between the standard VM uh, and also the spot VM. Okay, now I'm going to talk about optimize your discounts. From these metrics, we can see that commuted, committed usage discounts is actually on the bottom right corner, which is uh, one of uh, the uh, low effort high savings way of uh, cost optimization on Compute Engine. So um, when you buy CODs, what are CODs? When you buy CODs, you receive discounted prices in exchange for your committed commitment to use either a minimum level of resources or spend a minimal amount of money for a specific term of one or three years. So basically, uh, COD is uh, you are getting a discount, but uh, it is this is in exchange for the flexibility. You are giving up flexibility uh, to get a discount, and this discount can be one year or three years. If you commit for three years, the discount level is higher. What I want to say is that the COD is probably the single most important cost optimization method for compute engine. So if, you, if your company is already using Google Cloud and if you haven't really considered about COD before, probably this is the top most item that you need to review. Uh, and uh, it probably can save you at least 20 to 30% of your total compute spent just by a few simple clicks. Um, the COD um, types and uh, structure can be a little bit uh, complex, but I will cover them one by one. Um, so there are not just one type of CODs. There are resource-based CODs and there are flexible CODs. So let us let me cover the resource-based CODs first. Um, so resource-based CODs offer deep discounts in exchange for a commitment term, which is one year or three years. Uh, on the right, you can see that the one-year commitment can give you a discount up to 37%. A three-year commitment can give you a discount up to 57%. It is uh, just take note that uh, if your organization already have an enterprise agreement with Google, it is likely that uh, the commitment discount is on, on top of, uh, of the existing enterprise discount. So actually uh, the total discount uh, as compared with the list price is, can be even higher. Um, the resource-based COD is ideal for a predictable and steady-state workload. It's applied to aggregate resources like vCPU, memory, local SSD, and GPUs uh, for a project within a region and machine family. So when you buy the COD, you need to specify the project, you need to specify a region, and you need to specify a machine family. But this is, um, I mean, uh, 
the scope by default is within the project, but you can also enable so-called COD sharing across your billing account. So basically, if you have a multiple projects under one billing account, you can make the configuration so that uh, the COD can be shared between different projects. This is especially useful for if you uh, if you have a uh, workloads that may transfer between projects, or if you have a uh, like uh, not so steady uh, usage under each and every project, but overall uh, the usage is more stable. Um, thank you for the question in the chat. I will answer the question in the live Q&A session. Uh, just keep adding on questions and I will uh, try to answer all of them. So uh, we covered resource-based CODs and uh, now I'm going to cover about the flexible COD. So this uh, flexible COD is actually, you can consider it as a supplement of uh, resource-based CODs. It offer good discounts in exchange for a commitment term of one year or three years. On the, to the right, you can see that uh, the discount rate is actually uh, not bad, but uh, uh, not as good as the resource-based CODs. The reason is that uh, flexible COD, as this name suggests, is more flexible. It's not really mapped to a particular region. It's not mapped to a particular machine family. So all eligible region machine family resource can actually use a flexible COD. So this is especially important and useful if you are not really so sure about uh, whether you are going to spend uh, resources, whether you are going to spend resources uh, in the particular region for one year or three years. So maybe you want to move uh, the resources to a different region, or maybe the project will get killed and you will have some new project and new usage in the different CPU family and new region. So if this go is going to ex expect it to happen, then you can use flexible COD to cover the usage. And as you can see, um, this covers not only uh, to uh, compute engine as, uh, as your standalone VMs, but it also covers the underlying uh, compute resources used uh, with GKE and Dataprop. So this is an easy comparison chart. Um, easy comparison table between resource-based CODs and flexible CODs. So it actually covers uh, the um, differences between these two items. The important thing were actually the recommended way of using the resource-based CODs and flexible CODs is that it's, this, is, this is actually not a, a apple or orange. I mean, this is not a, actually a A or B question. You can have both. You can buy, we can buy some resource-based CODs and on top of that, you can buy some additional flexible CODs so that you can have a maximum flexibility and the cost saving. So we also have the so-called sustained, sustained usage discount or SUDs. Um, this is offered on resources that are used for more than 25% of a billion months and not receiving any other discounts. So just take note that sustained usage discount is not stackable with CUDs or enterprise discounts. It only applies to resources that are not eligible to any other discount. And SUDs do not need you to do any commitment. Uh, as long as you keep using the resources, uh, the SUDs will be automatically applied to eligible resources. So, this is actually an order of application of discounting billing. First, uh, any resource, uh, any resource that you have used will try to check whether there are any existing resource-based CUDs. Uh, then uh, if, uh, if uh, the matching criteria match, then uh, the resource will actually start to use or consume the commitments you make in the resource-based CUDs. After all the um, resource-based CODs are being consumed or uh, for resources that you use that, that not, does not match any existing resource-based CODs, it will start to check whether there are any flexible CODs that you have purchased that can match the resource. And then after one and two, after resource-based CODs and flexible CODs, um, the remaining resource 
will try to check whether there are any other discounts. And this discount can be an enterprise discount or SUD. Um, this is a typical example of how you can apply a mix of resource-based and flexible CODs to maximize savings. So let's say you have some planned steady workloads that is more or less very stable. You also have a part of the workload that is considered as a growth, which basically means that let's say uh, maybe it's going, uh, it's going to grow like a 5% or 3% per month or per year, or it may be a burst workload which basically is uh, something like a, a sales event or like uh, or a migration to a new platform or maybe some other event that you expect that the usage is going to increase for the sh for a short period of time. And there may also be uh, unplanned or spread out workload that uh, can happen in your projects. So um, depend you can you can actually have uh, these three types of uh, discounts applied in the multi-tier model. Uh, you use resource-based CODs to cover the most steady workload. You have the flexible CODs to cover some of the growth or burst uh, workload. And uh, for the rest, you use on-demand price uh, or SUDs, which are automatically applied. OK, so talk, uh, I'll talk about uh, CODs. Now let's talk more about the cost reporting tools and techniques. Um, Bidding in GCP console is probably the first and most important tool you need to master to monitor your overall cloud cost. So just go to your GCP console, um, search for bidding, and you will, you will be able to reach that page. There are many useful and important features that you can use, like uh, reports, cost table, Barges and alerts, bidding export, COD dashboard, and COD analysis. Because uh, we just uh, covered COD, uh, let's cover the COD dashboard and COD analysis first. Um, okay, so COD dashboard, which is basically a list of all the CODs you purchase. You can see that uh, because of the nature of the COD, um, every time you commit a resource, it will actually generate an entry in the COD uh, list, and uh, as time goes by, you can you can probably have uh, multi, many many COD entries. So there's also another feature called merging CODs, which can help you manage uh, CODs more easily. You can actually merge um, CODs of the same same machine type to one uh, one single entry. Another very, very important tool for you to analyze the COD is COD analysis dashboard. You should use this tool to understand what is your current on-demand usage, um, how much of the current on-demand usage um, is covered by your existing CODs, and uh, how much more money you can save by buying additional CODs and how much more CODs you should buy. You can get the answers to these questions using the COD analysis dashboard. So this is a, also a screenshot of a COD, um, COD analysis dashboard. And uh, this is actually an example of a resource-based COD plus flexible COD plan, which is a so-called multi-tier uh, COD plan. You can see that uh, the total usage, daily usage is actually represented in the, uh, in the bars. And uh, the blue area is actually the resource-based COD that the customer has purchased. And uh, after the blue area, I mean, after the, all the uh, resource-based CODs are consumed, the additional on-demand usage is going to check whether there are any flexible CODs. In this case, the customer also have some flexible CODs and these flexible CODs covered the rest of the on-demand cost. So from what it looks like, uh, the flexible COD uh, is not fully consumed. It can also be applied automatically to other, um, other machine families as well. All right, so this is, uh, let's, let's review uh, these um, metrics again. We'll now talk about uh, um, some of the features like uh, right sizing and idle resources and uh, to work on this, 
optimization techniques, you can use some of the reporting tools to help you. Okay, so we have the COD recommendations. Uh, this can guide you the pur purchase with prepackaged analysis. So this is something like uh, uh, insight, right? Automatic insight. Um, it gives you a, a very easy way to purchase CODs. You don't really have to go through um, the COD analysis tool. Just go to the COD recommendations, uh, review the recommendations, and uh, you can click the button to purchase the COD. And you can, before you purchase, you can even understand uh, how much money you can save uh, with this uh, COD purchase action. But uh, this is um, um, this is actually quite useful if your total usage pattern is more predictable. If uh, your usage pattern is not very predictable, then I would still recommend you to just use the COD recommendations as a reference. Uh, go to the COD analysis tool by yourself. Do some calculations uh, before you actually make the commitment. Uh, that is because when you make a one-year or three-year commitment, uh, without valid reasons, it is not able. You are not able to cancel or withdraw the commitment. Um, so the recommendation, recommendation to the recommendations too, is actually a very useful resource in the GCP console. It does not only give you recommendation about CODs, but it also gives you recommendations about uh, many other stuff that can help you save cost. Uh, one example is the VM right sizing recommendations. And what it does is that uh, it keeps monitoring your uh, VMs and uh, the resource usage of the VM. If uh, it identifies that, uh, for example, the CPU usage or RAM usage is far lower or higher than the, um, than the, the actual machine type that is deployed, it will give you a recommendation for you to upsize or downsize the instance. If you downsize the instance, instance uh, well, still able to serve the existing workload, then of course you will save money. Uh, if the recommendation is for you to upsize the instance, most likely it's because uh, the instance is constantly under high load. If you provide a high, a better, a bigger instance, then probably your users will actually have a better service with lighter, uh, with lower latency. There's also uh, IDLE VM and PD recommendations. PD stands for persistent disk, which is uh, uh, one of the storage types. So this is uh, pretty simple. It identifies the VM and PD uh, that is not used in the past uh, 30 days. Uh, if uh, that is the case, you can try to spot and uh, figure out with relevant teams whether these resources are still being used. If not, you can, close the, uh, you can shut down these resources to save cost. Um, one of a very, very important feature of a cloud billing console is uh, setting budget alerts. Um, this does not really directly save you money, but uh, this is actually very important and usually over, overlooked by many customers. Um, it is very important to avoid billing surprises. Um, the reason that uh, you need to set a budget alert is that I can give you a customer example. Um, I have some customers who accidentally enabled cloud logging, uh, log ingestion for all their logs. And uh, they actually ingested more than 100 TB of logs uh, in seven days. And actually, it uh, cost a lot of money. But if you already have a budget alert for, let's say, uh, cloud logging enabled, you, uh, the, you can probably already receive a notification uh, before uh, before it reaches seven days. So this is actually very important. Now let me quickly introduce the features of cloud logging. You can see how versatile and feature rich the simple budget alert is. You can set an alert over any time range, for example, monthly, quarterly, yearly, or customer range. You can set the scope to particular project service or resource label. You can select whether the alert triggers on gross spend or net spend. You can set an alert to trigger on the fixed target amount, like, like $1,000 or $10,000, or you can set it on a variable spend amount. Let's say the last month or last quarter's spend. So whenever, uh, let's say you can set an alert uh, to trigger whenever your 
current monthly usage is greater than the usage of previous months, something like that. You can put multiple thresholds as percentage of target amount. So for example, you can set uh, the alert to trigger at 50% of the budget, 90% of the budget, 100% of budget, 120% of budget. You can set multiple uh, notifications so that, uh, uh, so that you can act accordingly. The notifications can be sent to email or to a pop sub topic. If it's sent to the pop sub topic, there are, million, uh, there are multiple ways that you can customize uh, how you receive the alert. Um, anything that uh, supports uh, pops up, let's say a Slack channel, a pager duty, or even SMS is uh, possible when you uh, when the alert is sent to a pops up topic. So um, this is our next topic about uh, visibility. Um, you can actually, um, if if the existing features or native features of cloud bidding in the console isn't very satisfactory, you can export your bidding data to BigQuery, and you can uh, you can use your customized queries to do uh, more analysis with your data. Let's say you can actually use a tool like uh, Looker Studio to visualize your data. So this can be done. Uh, very easily, we already have a public facing documentation and the step-by-step -step instructions um, to teach you how to um, do this kind of visualization with a few clicks. Okay, the next topic is to use Google Time Services. Um, so Google Time Services is actually an optional service, but uh, it is, um, it is associated with a premium support. So if you if your company already have access to premium support, it already includes access to uh, the basic level of time service called name time. You can also upgrade uh, name time service to a higher tier of service, um, like a dedicated time or multi time. The reason I want to cover about uh, time services and premium support is because um, as part of the offering of time services, uh, we actively monitor the cost for the customers. And uh, we also provide uh, cost optimization workshops and best practice sessions uh, for the customers. Let's say for a name time service, it includes cost management best practice sessions. For dedicated time service, uh, we can deliver a full cloud cost optimization workshop, including a detailed report that is customized to your existing workload and with step-by-step uh, -step instructions on uh, which product area you need to prioritize when working uh, with cost optimization. So this is a brief overview of the so-called full cost optimization workshop that TAM can provide uh, with the dedicated TAM service. Um, the audience is, uh, you can we, can, we can have uh, your finance teams, cooperation team, business leadership and project team leads to join the meeting. Um, it has uh, a few different sessions, one discovery, one introduction session, uh, one discovery session to uh, understand the details of uh, some uh, important questions and uh, we will also deliver a full report uh, for you to work on uh, the next steps of cost optimization. So this is actually another overview of the deliverables of the uh, cost optimization workshop. So notice that uh, uh, it only requires the customer to spend uh, three to four hours for the activity. Uh, the second step, which is the cost review part, is uh, actually purely done by the TAM. So the TAM will actually uh, dive deep into uh, your GCP organization, discover the most important services uh, that uh, is eligible for cost optimization, and make uh, prioritization decisions and draft a report uh, to be uh, presented in the cost report session. OK. That's basically um, summarize um, all I want to cover 
uh, in this session, but uh, please hold on. I will uh, start to answer the questions. Uh, before I proceed, uh, what's next? Um, just do a simple Google search, cost optimization at google.google.com. Uh, uh, the first three or four links actually summarizes some of the most important information. And uh, if you are already a premium support customer, contact your team to learn more. Let's see if you are interested in the cost optimization workshop or cost optimization best practices session, uh, reach out to your team to know more. If you are currently not a premium support customer, and uh, if you're interested to learn more about the premium support and the time services, please contact Google Cloud sales team and uh, get this information. Okay, now let's Hi, Lauren. Awesome. Thank you so much for that presentation and information and best practices. I definitely learned uh, some new tips, so really appreciate you sharing that with everyone. And for all of you who are joining us, we see a few questions that have come in through the chat, so we will get to those. Um, but first, we are going to cover a few of the pre-submitted questions. So let's dive right on in. Um, the first question is, is there any tool offered by Google that can suggest effective ways of cost optimization over your existing GCP implementation? Thank you, Lauren. Uh, so the simple answer is yes. Uh, I've already covered that uh, in the presentation, um, but uh, Recommendation Hub is the tool that you're looking for. It has uh, many different features like a COD recommendations, IDO VM recommendations, uh, right sizing recommendations, as well as something else. Um, just uh, take a look at the documentation. Um, and this link, Quick Start Recommendations Hub, it will actually guide you, go lead you to a guided tour of uh, the tool uh, in, the, in the GCP console. Uh, it will only take you like uh, three to five minutes to learn the tool. Um, you can also refer to the, um, the third item in the in the in the page, which is cost optimization on Google Cloud for developers and operators, uh, this is actually this is actually a page with many many cost optimization techniques categorized by uh, GCP products, not only compute but also other GCP products like GKE, like uh, BigQuery. Uh, it's actually a very good resource if you want to explore more advanced ways for cost optimization. And you can also refer to Google Cloud Blocks for cost management. Um, so for that one, it's uh, more about uh, new product features and it is also categorized by, uh, by product. Um, just take note that uh, I understand the question is to ask for a tool to automatically suggest effective ways of cost optimization. But uh, please take note that most of cost optimization techniques are not expected to be fully automatic. Um, most of the times you still, you always need to make a decision. You also always need to make a trade-off. Like the CODs, uh, you need to trade uh, flexibility for discounts. The reason that you need to make a business decision is that uh, if there's a solution that is uh, proven to be effective for everyone 100% of the time, then I would believe that the provider like Google should already apply to all uh, apply it to all customers. So I mean, I mean, different people need different things. Different customers have different workloads. Uh, they have different requirements. So uh, you, the project owner, the IT manager, needs to make the decision, and uh, the Google team can help you make the decision. Love right. that. Thank you. And we did just drop a link to the recommender, um, so you can check that out. All right, the next question is, can landing zones be built to take advantage of use discounts and enterprise spending policies and budgets? Thank you, Lauren. Uh, the answer is yes. So uh, the first thing that I show on this page is uh, landing zone design on Google Cloud. And actually cost control or cost control policies is actually an essential part of the landing zone design. Um, as, as I mean, technically, it, you can enforce your cost policies based on your enterprise discounts policies and budgets. So basically, not only you will receive a notification when your budget is, um, is over a certain limit, 
but uh, you can also enforce uh, a budget. So let's see if your spend is already over a certain amount. You can make it, you can, it is possible for you to stop new resources from being deployed. But uh, I mean, most of the cases, um, there are a lot of uh, unexpected things that can happen in the customer's GCP project. So from my experience, not many customers will actually enforce the cost of policies because um, many times there is a valid business and technical reason why your spend can get over a certain limit. Uh, the budget is very useful, but sometimes uh, the budget can and should be increased. So, but this is a, the feature is there. You can, you can do it, you can enforce it if you want. Um, regarding the landing zone design, um, it might be difficult for new GCP customers. Uh, so we have provided many ways for you to get help with the design. You can reach out to Google Cloud Partners, uh, Google Cloud Consulting, which is the, the Google, uh, uh, Google professional services team. Um, you can also utilize the Google Cloud customer onboarding program. And uh, if you want to do it on your own without any additional cost, you can also uh, do a self-service by referencing to the Cloud Foundation setup guide in the public documentation here. Yeah, that's all. Perfect. Thank you for that. Okay, we'll do one more uh, and then we'll hop to some of the, pre the live questions. Is there a cookbook for optimization best practices grouped by GCP services? Yes. Um, so that's a, that the link is uh, the one that is shared uh, um, after the first question. Cost optimization, Google Cloud for developers and operators. Uh, there are also other resources like Google Cloud Blogs. And uh, you can also get uh, product specific guides from your TAM or Google Cloud sales team. Yeah, back to you, Lauren. Perfect. All right, we're gonna take one from the live chat. So we got a question here. What should we do if we realize later that we want to change our VM family, say from E2 to C2 or the VM type? Uh, first of all, thank you, Dave, for the question. So I would assume that this question is uh, related to uh, CUDs, right? So if you already have purchased the CUDs for E2, what happens when you move from E2 to C2? So um, just take note that uh, a COD is a commitment. If you commit to spend on E2 for one year or three years, you are, I mean, contractually uh, required to have the resource for one year or three years. Otherwise, you still need to pay for the commitment price. Um, so, I mean, if you, if you want to move from E2 to C2, uh, the short answer is that, uh, uh, I mean, uh, if you only have one project, then probably um, you're not really recommended to do that. Uh, you can actually add more resources, right? Uh, maybe uh, a fleet, uh, manage the instance group of E2, plus a manage the instance of additional C2s to serve your workload. And what else you can do is that if you have multiple projects and you have, have uh, E2 usage in other projects in the same region, you can also share the COD with other projects by using the COD sharing feature. And other than that, uh, as a last resort, if you still have a very, very valid reason that you want to cancel or terminate the COD, you can raise a GCP case where you can reach out to the GCP TAM, a Google Cloud TAM or Google Cloud sales team and see whether we can create, uh, give you an exception. But that is uh, a case by case uh, scenario. Got it. I think this question might uh, be similar or related. So we're going to ask this one as well. Do I need to create a new VM to make it apply a discount or can I apply discounts to existing VMs? First of all, thank you for the question. Uh, the simple answer is that you do not need to create a new VM or restart the VM uh, if you want to apply the discount. The discount um, happens automatically, and uh, it is not that it's not like uh, like something like a license transfer, which happens uh, during the instance start. It will automatically uh, be matched after the COD purchase, so you don't have to restart the VM or create a new VM for the discount to to be applicable. 
Awesome. Thank you for your questions. If you have any others, please feel free to drop those into the chat and we'll be sure to get to them. Okay, just a few more. Um, so how can we label services and see the cost of each one in the billing reports? Okay, um, first of all, thank you for the question. Uh, the original question is how can we tag services and see the cost of each time in the billing reports? Uh, so I just want to make a correction. Uh, in Google Cloud, we use label for this feature. Uh, tag is totally different feature, uh, mm -hmm. which is uh, not, uh, not really related. So uh, you can use labels to manage your resources. Uh, you can refer to this, uh, this guide. Uh, I, I, can, I think uh, you can actually use label to, uh, to apply to almost every kind of resource you have. You can then, uh, after you apply the labels, you can then filter by label in your billing reports. If you export the billing data to BigQuery, you can also query with labels, like uh, select uh, a particular um, usage in the giving month or giving week uh, with uh, the label equal to dev or label equal to uh, department equal to uh, IT, something like that. That's all. Thank you. Great. And thanks for the clarification there. What are the advanced techniques to optimize Google Cloud costs? Okay, thank you for the question. Um, you can start by reading the following topic. Uh, which I already shared uh, multiple times previously, mm -hmm. which is cost optimization on Google Cloud for developers and operators. Uh, it actually includes uh, many of the advanced cost optimization techniques. Uh, however, I think my recommendation would be, uh, it is not always advisable to choose an advanced technique uh, because the objective of cost optimization is to save cost, it is to, is to save money. Uh, the best cost optimization technique requires minimum effort to achieve maximum cost benefit. And that's why we have the metrics, right? Uh, we always want to try the cost optimization technique that uh, requires minimal effort, requires no code refactoring or replatforming, and uh, but can give you maximum uh, cost savings. So what I want to suggest to you is to check your Google cost report for last month or last quarter and in terms of spending, what is the top service? Is it compute engine? Is it something else? Is it BigQuery? What is the top SKU? So from there, you can probably have an idea what you should prioritize. Uh, if uh, like if your BigQuery cost is uh, 10 times more than the second service, definitely you should uh, read the BigQuery cost optimization articles and apply some of the uh, techniques first. Um, yeah, so that's... That's, uh, that's actually my recommendation. So uh, after you apply some of the uh, prioritized or most effective uh, cost optimization techniques, you can gradually improve your um, cost, uh, your, your, your cost posture with more advanced uh, long-term cost strategies. Uh, maybe for example, if you want to, uh, in the long term, you want to re-platform from uh, from Compute Engine to uh, GKE or mm. to App Engine, it can actually save you additional cost in the long term. But uh, it actually will require you uh, to spend a lot of time and effort to do that. Another thing that I want to recommend is that if you have a Google team that is working with you, whether you have premium support or not, reach out to the Google sales team, reach out to the Google uh, customer engineer team, uh, reach out to, if you have premium support, that is perfect. Reach out to your team, then get their advice. Oh, that's my answer. Thank you. Great. And that is uh, the last question that we had. So if you do have any others, um, please feel free to add them into the chat and we will be sure to address them and answer them um, in the community in our recap blog post. So um, we look forward to seeing if you have any additional questions. And, and to that point about um, getting you know, feedback or advice from others, please always feel free to utilize the community for that as well. Um, you know, it's always available. There's others and experts and peers that are there that can help support you and answer your questions. And you can even search for existing answers and Googlers are in there as well that are ready and willing and able to assist you. So that can be a good option in the meantime. 
With that, um, the last thing I wanted to mention was just to say thank you all for joining us and that we do have an event feedback form that was just dropped into the chat where we'd love to hear from you what you thought about this topic, this event, um, what you liked, what you'd like to see differently or for future sessions, and if there are any topics that you have in mind that you'd like us to dive into or to cover for another topic or another session. So please, uh, we'd love to hear from you. It only takes a, a couple of minutes to complete that. And Dawe, uh, with that, just want to say thank you so much for your time, for sharing your knowledge and recommendations with us. This was certainly valuable for me, and I, I, I hope it was valuable for everyone who was able to join us. Do you have any final thoughts or recommendations before we close out the session today? Um, thank you very much, Lauren, for organizing the session. Um, the last comment is that, uh, um, as you mentioned, if you have any comments or suggestions, feel free to fill up the form, or you can actually comment directly under the video. Uh, Google Cloud events have uh, different uh, webinars uh, on different topics, so just uh, subscribe to our channel and see um, you definitely will find uh, something useful for you. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. And we hope to see you next time. Thank you. Bye-bye.